Let's get it going. Come on, come on, come on. Woo! Godfather's back, and the house is packed. Yeah! In the chat room, age, city, gender, Mm-mm. get them up, people. You know how we do this over here. You know how we do. Hit that like button and hit that cash app, that super chat. Woo! I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD. Want to see her move? Yeah. 
Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? We're back. Shout out to all the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to those feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies. Yeah, baby. Keep it going, fellas. Keep it moving, ladies. Not a problem. We are back, we are back, we are back. Welcome back, and the house is packed. Shout out to the competent, intelligent, and assertive men out there. CIA, one love to the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies. FBI. Tonight, we are going to get into it. But before we get into it, uh, Candle of the Evening, Suntal 26, Fragrance of the Evening, Pegasus, exclusive oh 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 today has been a hell of a day it's like the good news keeps coming in um we're gonna get more into that in a minute just a second good news yes good news for those of you who don't know, I've been contemplating relocating to the Big Apple, back to the Big Apple, or possibly to the West Coast. So I will be going out to L.A. this weekend, uh, to Beverly Hills, looking around, seeing if I like it, see if I love it. But uh, I, in the last eight weeks, I've spent roughly three in Manhattan. Uh, yeah. Don't be surprised if Late Night with the Godfather, whatever we call this show, is coming to you from Manhattan. Good news, great news. Uh, a lot of good stuff happened up there. Um, interviews, podcasts, collaborations, lots of things going on. But tonight I wanted to get into a continuation of a subject that we need to talk about. Uh, on Wednesday night, I believe, I talked about the one thing that is keeping women single 
and unmarried. And if you didn't watch that show, go back and look at it. It is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The one thing that's keeping women single and unmarried, and it's these gum lists so many of you ladies have. He has to have this. He has to have that. Da, 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 da. Uh, and then last night, I followed it up with another, what I consider to soon to be a classic. Um, the major problem with dating today. The major problem with dating today. Uh, and what is it? All this damn confusion. What does this mean? What does that mean? What does this mean? What does that mean? See, when you are a confident, intelligent, and assertive man, you're very direct. You're transparent. You don't play games. And that tends to throw people off who are used to having to play games because you're direct. And if when you're an FBI woman, you're transparent, direct, and don't play games either, especially if you're a high-value woman. High-value women, a part of being high-value is her transparentness, her inability to play games. Matter of fact, when you are a high-value man or a high-value woman, you will find that you have a distaste, a disdain for people who play games. Why? Because they're juvenile, they're childish, they're unnecessary, and they waste the most valuable asset commodity that any higher value person has. It's time. Children play games and waste time. Teenagers play game and waste time. People who are not productive, competitive, or successful play games and waste time. But high achievers, go-getters, ambitious, assertive, ambitious, assertive, aggressive people don't waste time. It's the one resource that you cannot get back. Playing games is a waste of time. It doesn't matter why the game is played, whether it's naive or unintended or intended, the outcome's the same, wasting of your time. It doesn't matter why women write these long lists, the outcome is the same, waste of time. So what we tend to have today is women in a quest to make the right choice tend to lean towards dating monsters. Modern women love dating monsters. Before we get into that though, you see that little like button down there? If the likes don't stay up over 50%, you know what's going to happen? We're going to hear this song right here. In its entirety. And right now we should have over a thousand likes. We only have 700. So I'm going to give you a few minutes because you probably got excited when you saw your godfather in the house on time. Looking good, smelling good, because you're the shit. Don't worry about it. But get him on up. Shout out to Ike. Ike came through doing what he do. I am the king, you will not be. I am the I am the I am the king, you king, king, you will not be. All right, and this is the area where women over 27 should be winning head and shoulders above younger women. Why over 27? Because at age 27 to 35, you're in what I call the danger zone. That means if you don't make choices, right-headed choices quickly, you are going to blow the air, the years you have right before the wall and prior to what goes into high-risk pregnancy. The danger zone is the yellow light. There's a There should be a red flashing light saying, pay attention. You don't have years to waste anymore. Stop focusing on you. Stop doing all the things that you've done to keep yourself safe and key in to what you want to do. I was talking to my best friend today and uh, his uh, girlfriend, they had to go out of town because one of their relatives passed, died from cancer. And um, they're, they're, the person down there is going to be left without a spouse. They were married for 17 years. And it's sad and me as a cancer survivor, I've always been acutely aware of time. 
And I said, you know what? At least that person had 17 years to spend with someone. So even after that person is transitioned on and shuffled off that motor call, they're going to grieve. They're going to hurt, but they can say they had that 17 years. They did not waste time because when you when it's time to go, it's time to go. I was also recalled a friend of mine that I knew in college who I found out she was sick one day. She was dead the next, but she had been married for 20 years. And what we're left with is happy memories of her. She built a family, a legacy and all these things. I'm saying how many people today are not going to make it to 2020? I mean, to 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have time to waste and play. Life happens to us all. And I guarantee you, it was easier to go through chemotherapy, radiation, all the things that happen to a person who goes through cancer. I've been there. I was a single young man going through it. And I felt like Tom Hanks in Castaway. Never have you felt so alone when you're facing your own mortality. People don't know how to act. People don't know how to respond. You're dying in front of people. Your hair is falling out. You're getting skinny. And people just shut down. But I had a will to live and desire to live and modern medicine, God on my side. Hey, I'm still here. The point I'm trying to get to you is people stop living life as if you got forever and stop living life afraid to make mistakes. Because once you get on the other side of that danger zone, this is what's coming. There's your fertility. There's your ability to really pair bond and successfully mate with somebody long term. Because the older you, the longer you wait, the more you are without a long term significant relationship that's building something. What are we doing? What are you wasting time for? I hear you. I'm a PhD. You, when I asked this woman about her husband, she said, what? But I would never, I would never choose to. I'm a PhD. It's right here on this, on this channel. Go look at it. I just asked her, what would your husband think? All these accolades, all these things, your job, your, your, your job, your, your money, your car, your condo, all these things. Great. No one to share it with. So that leads modern women to instead of doing like Jess, a woman who called in earlier last week, excuse me, good foe, it's Jess, 43 year old woman from San Diego called in and said, if I could tell young women one thing, I would tell them to focus on finding a husband in your undergrad because dating out here sucks. And I'm having more and more professional women calling in and raising their hands saying, you know what? That's right. But here's the thing. You ladies over 30 should be making better choices because like I told Jess, the one thing an older woman should be able to bring to the table that a younger woman can't is appreciation. You know what it's like on the other side. You know what it's like in, uh, 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 I don't know what your movie reference. Think about the book of Eli. You know what it's like out there in the wilderness. And now that you have somebody here, they're not perfect, but there's somebody to go through life with you. But no, instead, modern women would prefer to date monsters. Oh, these likes are not even close to being enough. 2,700 people in here, 1,100 likes. All right, 30 seconds. If we don't have the likes up, you will get the intermission. When I say monsters... Most of you probably are thinking the wrong thing. When I say monster, I'm not talking about, you know, what everybody refers to as Pookie and Ray Ray and Nug Nug and Tim Tim. That's not what I'm referring to when I say monsters. Nope. It's not what I'm referring to at all. What I'm referring to when I say monsters is this. What the hell? Yes. What is that? It's alive! It's alive! That's the famous line from the movie Frankenstein. Dr. Frankenstein, in an attempt 
to create life, went to a cemetery and took parts from this person, parts from that person, parts from this person, parts from that person, and made Frankenstein's monster. And through some electrical storms and some other kind of voodoo potion, it came to life. And that's what he said when he saw his creation come to life. He said, it's alive! and that's what so many of you modern women are trying to do. You are trying to date monsters. Why? Because instead of actually picking a man that's in your lane, suitable for you, that's around what you are and going on down the path of life at 25 on into the future. Nope. Nope. That's not good enough. You've got to date. Th you got to like this guy's money. This guy's lips, this guy's chest, this guy's package, this guy's sense of humor, that guy's intelligence. And you are trying to cobble together one man from all of these other parts, like a freaking Frankenstein monster. So what happens? You ladies go through life breaking relationship after relationship after relationship. You're like the woman in Chicago who says the problem is men are out here yet find out that she's dating down. You go to John Hopkins. He didn't even go to college. You're dating a man that you substantially out earn. And then, but why? Because you like something about him, but you were not equally yoked. You're trying to pick men and cobble together a man from all of these parts. That's why so many of you ladies refuse to get rid of your social media. This is why so many of you ladies are unable to pair bond because even when you start dating someone, you cannot give up all of the other Frankenstein like attention you're getting everywhere else. And it leads to chaos, confusion, madness. You're trying to make a perfect man. And there is no such thing. No such thing has ever walked the earth unless you believe in Jesus Christ, which many of you don't. I do. Shout out to Rebecca Lynn Pope, famous uh, matchmaker, dating coach. She says many of you ladies out here trying to make a perfect man. and You're not even half of the things you're looking for. But why? Why? Because modern women love dating monsters. They love it. They love this whole, I can't just get one. I have to have one here and three in the chamber. In case this goes wrong, I can monkey branch or swing over here. Your attention is never one place. It's always all over the place. And what ends up happening? The inevitable happens. Normal relationship stuff happens. And you're the first one to bail. 80% of relationships are terminated by women. Why? Because it just wasn't quite right. The mood wasn't right. It wasn't the right time. The earth and the planets weren't aligned. And what's going on? Clock's ticking. And you may be beautiful like the woman in Chicago said, oh, yes, I'm at 8.95231. I'm beyond Beyonce and I'm in great shape and everything else. And it matters not. Because you have no one to share life with. At best, you have to get back out and continue to date and date and date and date and date and date. And there will come a time to where even if you did find this perfect monster, uh, Will you be able to create life like Frankenstein did? No, because likely your eggs will be powdered. Why is this important? Because ladies, it is November 12th and it is time for you to stop trying to cobble together men from all over the place. It is time for you women who say you want something out of life to sit your hot pants down and pick choose decide to sit back and say i'm not perfect he's not perfect i don't need this mythical six feet i mean i listen to shout out to hafiz over at the roommates podcast i listen to a few of the calls over there before my show happened i'm hearing all these women with he needs to make six figures or he needs to make six figures and then say well only eight percent of people make six figures why are you trying to piece it why do you need this mythical monster because you've fallen in love with the monster. 
with if I can't have Frankenstein's monster, I might as well be single with my dog. I'm a PhD. And my PhD because I deserve the best. I mean, one time when I gave myself to somebody when I was 20 years old, that person dogged me out and hurt me. So I'm going to raise my guard up so high to where no one in the next 25 or 30 years will ever be able to climb. But at least I'm safe and secure. But I'm busy and focusing on myself and all those other things. And then you're still dating all these different pieces of people. But ladies, what ends up happening when you're dating monsters, when you're trying to make this monster, you become a terror. The horror is in dating modern women who like monsters. Because even when you sit down with a guy, you're not there. You're not present. You're worried about the next date or what's going to happen. It's a zero sum game. You're going to try to play him before he plays you. And the game ensues. If like it or not, modern dating is off the chain today in a lot uh, in a large part because, ladies, you like it this way. Now, there's another meaning of women like dating monsters. Yes, you love dating the men. That, you know, are no good for you. Oh, yeah, well, he has potential. Oh, did you see the shoulders? Did you see the package? The gray sweats? Uh huh. No potential. You're. I'm a PhD. You got your master's, your PhD, or whatever, and this dude is straight out. Y'all are not even culturally together. How you gonna be a an upper education and dating a street dude? How you gonna pledge? Delta or AKA and your, oh yeah, your imprint was still Pookie or Ray Ray. So in order to make this work, you need Tupac in a suit, another monster. You can't have the guy over here who's just a solid tax paying citizen who's making $85,000 a year in STEM. No, he's boring. You need the guy over here that's got two kid, two babies by two different women uh, because he's got swag and sex appeal and he's got his alpha shit on. But he can't do nothing for you except keep you in emotional chaos and sexual bliss. But hey, why a horror movie so popular? I mean, let's be honest. People don't run out to see dramas like they do to see horror. The stupidest horror movies are packed. But if you actually have real cinema, people don't go. It's boring. But you want to go see stupid slasher films and this and that and mindless humor because it engages your emotions. You can be scared. You can be this. You can be that. Have something to talk about. Ladies. You're falling in love with the monster concept. And in your attempt to make your dream come true, you're trying to change one man into eight. And it's not possible. It's not possible. You're not going to take a brother like Ike and turn him into a thug. It's just not. You're not gonna talk him. You're not gonna take a brother who can talk about Bernoulli equations and Riemann hypothesis and things like that, and try to make him down. You're gonna get an astute professional brother, but that ain't good enough. You need him to have swag and put on a wife beater and some Jordans and have a hat to the back because that'll make him more real. But ladies, monsters aren't real. Monsters are fantasy. But you want the fantasy. You want Frankenstein's monster. It's alive! And then that's what you're hoping. When I find him, when I find Frankenstein's monster, finally I will feel... It's alive! I'll be so happy. My life will be... It will be complete. I will be my... I'm a PhD. And he'll be... It's alive! 
<laughs> will have, and it'll all make sense. I can have my PhD, and he can be a monster, and he'll love my dog, and we can... <sighs> Doesn't it sound like something that Tyler Perry would love? And you buy the tickets, and you read the books, and you watch the movies, and you believe the bullcrap fantasy. All along... And you look up Danger zone. and you don't know how to date. You don't have anybody worth a damn trying to make you their wife. You'll waste six months, nine months, a year. You either break up or you run. Time goes on. And next thing you know, all you women who were actually eights, nines, even some that could have possibly been tens who. What happened? What happened to all you women who you really should have been married 10 years ago and be somebody's mother by the three times by the mid thirties, you really should be, you should be getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner and trying to get ready to pack, you know, pack, uh, decorate for Christmas. Cause you got stuff for the kids, but no, 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 no. You're, you're going to go buy, you're going to go buy your doggy a Christmas gift. You're going to have to play dirty. Uh, what's that elf? Elf on the shelf, you're going to play Elf on the shelf with your damn dog because all you have is your dog and your single girlfriends because you could never seem to come around and make your monster. Where's the problem, ladies? You want to say the horror, the problem, the issue is with men, but no, 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 no. Just like I told the woman in Alabama yesterday, uh, if you're an eight in Alabama, 38 years old, men should be beating a path to your door. The only thing that's common in all of your lack of relationships, two years out of 40 of your life were with a person, is you. But maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about because, you know, I'm just over here and I hate women or somebody hurt me or I'm secretly gay or whatever it is, whatever it is that makes me not know what I'm talking about. But right now your life is a horror show. It's a horror show. The men that you, the men that want you, you don't want them. The men that you, the men that you want don't want you. Or the men that you want aren't any good for you. And you're too old to be playing these games. Now, if anybody knows how the end of Frankenstein happened, it's pretty damn sad. But here's the choice. You're writing, you're writing the movie yourself. Guess what? You can write a new ending. You can decide to stop trying to cobble together this person, that person, any person. That. You can decide to actually get better at the first part of a relationship. Many of you ladies are great at the first part, the wow part, the romance part, the part where everything's a honeymoon phase. But when it gets real, six months, uh, three to six months in is when it falls apart. Because all you've done in your life, in your history, is had a relationship that lasted maybe one year. When you meet a woman and she's had relationships that have been one year or less, there's a red flag. Maybe really good at starting. Ladies, forget what men are saying. What about you? If it's always short term, long breaks, long distance, but all this male attention coming from all these different places, you're creating an emotional Frankenstein. It's alive! The monster that's in your mind, that's in your closet, and therefore every man that sits down in front of you is competing with pieces of men. The ghost of boyfriends past. Broken women, broken things. R reminds me. Shout out to uh, Stefan Lavasi. I want to play a video real quick because I wanted to respond to something that he did. And we're going to go ahead and open the call line. Um. 
I think he made a really good video. Um, and I think it's really, I think it's time to look at this because ladies, many of you are broken and broken people, broken, uh, out here trying to date are messing up. The Remember when I was talking to the other woman, the woman the other day, and she's like, well, I don't think that it's okay to say that just because you're broken, just because there's a problem, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. That doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, get out here and date. Well, let's see. Let us see. Yes, fair, we can, fair we use. not be fooled and buy into this idea that your love is enough to heal this woman. It is not. It is not because that is not the responsibility of your love. Shout out to Steph. Stefan Speaks. Good video. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Stefan Labossier, a.k.a. Stefan Speaks, back with another dating and relationship advice video. Today is going to be relationship advice for men, all right? And we're going to be talking about the fact that you can't heal her. Now, before we begin, as always, be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, share this. Yeah, uh, we are behind on the likes. Get them up. Hit the like button, people. Shouldn't have to do that, but video, all right? And leave your a poll, uh, the answer to this poll below in the comment section. Have you ever met a woman that you thought you could try to heal? Or basically, have you encountered a situation where, you know, you love this woman, you cared about her, you knew she was broken, and you tried to help her? I want to hear your feedback because not only uh, do, do I want to hear it from you, but I want people and i want even other women to see how many men are going through situations where they're dealing with this woman who's clearly holding on to issues clearly has some brokenness in her and trying to do their best to help but it's just leading to more problems and let's get into that now ghost of boyfriends past broken women broken women you love the monster concept so Steph made this video and I said, I really like this because I think he did a good job in trying to explain to women how men have been told and actually try to deal with women who are broken. And broken people cannot be healed by you, gentlemen. And ladies, if you're broken, what good is it to try to find anybody? Here we go. So you can't heal her. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I see so many situations where a man meets this woman, falls in love or, or has serious, genuine interest in this woman. But again, due to brokenness that she's holding on to, it is clear she needs healing. And she may be having issues of insecurity in the relationship or there may be other things that are coming up where she's getting triggered. But one way or another, there is a struggle in this relationship because of her lack of healing or hell some situations where she's afraid 
to embrace being in a relationship with this man because of her lack of healing. Now, the unfortunate part is that men have been told you need to love that woman and, and help her through her brokenness and be there for her. And, and you even hear women talk about, well, you know, if he loves me, he will help me in my healing. Wrong. Wrong. Y'all are wrong, ladies. Again. And when you don't get it from one man, you try to cobble it together from multiple different men. Broken women collect men for different purposes. Whole women need one man. Broken women are need a roster. Broken women want Frankenstein because you can't get all these things from one guy. And a big part of it is because ultimately you are broken. Setting men up for disaster. And I can say that because there's going to be tons of men who will be able to vouch and say how they have tried this and failed miserably how they have tried to get that woman to a better place try let me go ahead and say this too this is a men's channel rochelle and to your women like you don't come over here talking about yeah but they're broken men too that doesn't fix your problem anytime i hear women say yeah but what about the guys it more of pointing the finger that way instead of looking in that cracked mirror at your shattered reflection. Be patient. Try to show her all the love he can only to be damaged even more in the process. Only to be left high and dry. Only to see that woman even go back to the toxic relationship she left before him. To oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what did he say? Broken women cobble together their Frankenstein's men and guys try to help them. Don't help them. They don't save them. They don't want to be saved because more often than not, they're going to end up going right back to the brokenness, the baby daddy, the ex-boyfriend, the situation that they know didn't work. Gentlemen, if she has not resolved with her ex, do not deal with her. More on that in a minute. Not appreciate or to at least not show a level of appreciation for his efforts and instead to reward the bad behavior of another man. Good job, Because Steph. you can't heal her. Here's the reality. The more you try to pour into that woman and heal her, the more she actually can become afraid to be vulnerable to you. Steph just dropped a bomb. The more you try to pour into a broken woman to heal her, the more she can become afraid because you are too healthy. You are too transparent. You are too direct. You know where you are on your purpose. This is why broken people and complete people cannot work. This is why they run or they go back to the cheaters because they know that you are healthy and ready and moving forward. And they know that they are unfit, even though they may look good. They know something's wrong because life happens to us all people. Life happens to us all. And we don't get to pull out and say, well, uh, this happened or that happened. You build the airplane while you fly it. We don't get to pull the out. Healthy people don't pull out and jump and say, well, it's not a perfect time or whatever, whatever. It's a sign, ladies. It's a sign that you're broken. It's a sign, gentlemen. Pay attention. Because like I was talking about my boy, my boy Jeff. Earlier. Life happens. Someone passed from cancer. They had to break their plans, go down there. But you got to continue to move. You don't only move forward when things are perfect. That is a sign of more brokenness, fear, scarcity, whatever, not healthy. Because she is not at a place where she is ready to open herself up. And you pouring in all that love is essentially demanding her demanding her to be vulnerable and that scares her 
that overwhelms her. And if it this is why I wanted to play this video. That was killing the nun. Ladies, how many times have you said you wanted something and to get it from a man and you are freaked out, you panic, you backtrack, you leave, you move because you're terrified because it demands that you stand up and be accountable. It demands that you stand up and say, I'm ready for what I want. No, 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 no. If I was trying to get it from all these different places and all these things are in one man, I'm not ready for that. Get him, Steph. Anything, it causes her to shut down. She needs space. She can't think clearly. This is too damn much. And being with you requires her to level up, requires her to step up to the plate and be a better woman. And <laughs> Let me tell you what you want to about Stephon LeBoisier, but he brought it. He brought it in this video. Being with a complete man requires you as a woman to step up to level up you know all you women talking about leveling up leveling up leveling up yeah and i've said it too many times how about when you find what it is you say you're looking for can you even keep it because you have to be ready because he's not going to waste time he's going to be ready and if you cannot you get overwhelmed they panic they run it's a reason broken to do that, she has to face her demons. She has to face her issues. And let me tell you, I've had so many women say to me, and I quote, one of the hardest things to do as a woman is face myself in the mirror. For her to have to... <laughs> Woo! Bring in the fire. And this doesn't matter. And this is why I said last night, you would think women who... This is why this little I'm a PhD. matters so much because... You're educated, you're earning, but that doesn't mean you're emotionally more intelligent because the hardest person to face is yourself in the mirror. Go on, Steph. Give him, give him a Revisit that pain, revisit that trauma is so difficult. So you demanding that she do does that is too much for her. So it's easier now to run to that toxic situation. It's easier to deal with that lower level man because over there, I don't have to face my issues. I don't have to do the work necessary because that work hurts too much. So you as a man think your love will cure her when in actuality, it may run her further away. And now you can still love her, but you may have to love her from a distance. You're going to you go. have to let go. You're going to have to let. And this is why you ladies are always saying you can't find a good man because good men won't stay around for this. They won't. They can wish you the best, but they're going to wish you the best from over here because they can't do anything because you're broken. You have to face it. You have to fix it because needing all these things from all these different men is a good sign that you are broken. I know that, listen, I, I, I support you. I want to encourage you, but this is a path you have to walk on your own. And listen, just so y'all don't think I'm, I'm being against women in any kind of way, I would give the same exact advice to women about trying to heal a man. You can't heal him and he can't heal you. But this is about the men. I'm talking to the men. So listen, when you come across that kind of woman, you have to recognize that it is not your responsibility to heal her. And you can't even if you try. So when you ladies talk about a man should walk through it with you, Iana Van Zandt, fix my life. I teach my sons to stand in it. That is the exact wrong thing. And it is a horrible thing to tell a man who's on his purpose, on his dry, on his grind. Because he's going, what? Even if he could turn and try to pour into you, it wouldn't work. Ladies, so many of you are broken. Trying to think if you can cobble together the perfect man. It's a lie! It'll fix your life. And it won't. You have to do the work. Before you can have the man. She has to do it for herself. But let me do not be fooled and buy into this idea 
that your love is enough to heal this woman. It is not. It is not because that is not the responsibility of your love. For more of that video, go check out uh, Brother Steph, Stephon Speaks. He was dropping knowledge in that video. And I know there's some guys who have, who have probably been like, oh, uh, I tell you, a broken, rock, I mean, bro broken clock can be right. That brother was dropping knowledge late. I'm not telling you this to hurt you. I'm not telling you this to hurt you, but what I'm telling you is for you to start looking in the mirror and realizing that you are likely the issue in your relationships. You can't keep a man. You're afraid of relationships. Again, patterns. You're running or go to the bad boy or the cheater. Long distance relationships, short term relationships. All of it comes down to the same thing. What is the one question I tend to ask of people more than anything else? Who's your therapist? Who's your therapist? And it doesn't matter how smart or how intelligent, or how much money you make, you still got to do the work. And this is why so many, and, and when I say that women love to date monsters, it's because you're trying to do all these things. Looking at, if I can get this or this or this or that all in one person, and then when you find it, it scares you. See, Frankenstein was Dr. Frankenstein's creation, but he scared everybody else. The very thing you say you want, if you got all those pieces in one person, it would scare you. I'm preaching today, boy. I am preaching today. I've seen it happen too many times. It's happened to me. And the thing is, I feel sad for you ladies that it happens to because I've seen women do this stuff with men that would work for them, but they were overwhelmed, scared, afraid to be vulnerable because they had not done the work and they had been skating by on mediocre for so long in these situationships, in these things that really didn't work, nothing long-term, nothing significant, nothing solid, nothing real. And then you find this quality man, this high-value man, these things that you say you want, and he's up front, direct, straightforward, transparent, lays it out on the ground, moving forward. And I said, oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, this is too fast. Uh, ah, 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 ah. Boom. If that's happened to you, I want to talk to you. If you think I'm full of shit and don't know what I'm talking about, I want to talk to you. But at the end of the day, ladies, Frankenstein is real. And then you find ain't going to save you. You got to be able to live and deal with the men that you say you want. Now, what you going to do? What are you going to do? Because I, I did this on Instagram earlier. Talked about when a, when a situation is too good, it's human nature to look for a problem. It's human nature to look for a problem, look for an issue, look for an out. Why? Because you have such a hard time accepting that something can be correct. But when you have resolved in yourself that you deserve what's good, when your karma is clean, when you're on your purpose, when good things come into your life, you're like, about time. For more than I'm talking about, go to my IG. It's on my IG. I don't want to play a long video, but I talked about a car. A car that you're looking for. If you got $30,000 to buy a car and you want a Benz and you see a car and it's a brand and it's a Benz and it's sitting there. You walk up and say, well, maybe it's the 2017. Maybe I can get it for this. And it turns out to be a 2021 with no miles. And they sell it for $5,000. First thing you'd be like, can't be real. Can't be real. Versus that's one mentality. My Versus if you're ready to go and have a different mentality, you're like, I am lucky. I find what I look for. Good faith. If you walk into situations, ladies, always thinking that men are bad, 
The shoe's going to drop. It can't be good. Something's always got to go wrong. You will manifest or create problems where they're not there. And that is more signs of broken. Versus you wonder why you can see women who meet somebody and they're married six months later because they're not broken. They're going into relationships ready to ready to move forward. They are whole people right there and available. I said it before and I'll say it again. Many of you ladies today lack the skill sets to make long term relationships. You're great at starting. But you lack the skill sets. Now, it's funny that you'll go to college and increase your skill sets to get a job, but you won't do anything to increase your skill sets to get a man. The skill sets for a relationship, an in-person 24-7, 365 relationship, not a long distance relationship, not a situationship. Hey, I'm here, you're here. We're, we're going through the ups and downs through this moving forward. When, when, when I, coronavirus, flu, pandemic, death in the family, dog dies. You don't get to leave. You're there. For better or worse, the richer for poorer, sickness and health, the death do us part. See, that's that's the thing y'all say you want. But then when it comes to you, you're sitting back saying, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for it. What are you going to do, ladies? How many of you are tired of going to see the monster movie. How many of you tired of being addicted to the monsters? It's alive! Let's see. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. So here we go. 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 
The only requirement is I asked is when you join, you got to join in using computer audio, ladies. Join in using computer audio. No, I don't know why it's hard for some of you guys to get this thing connected. But, you know, um, also, um, click that camera icon. Uh, I'm going to ask some of you guys to start the video. You don't have to be on you. You don't have to be on YouTube. Uh, but I would like to see who is talking. Uh, here we go. Fatima, you're going to be up. Shout out to Chuck, uh, Chuck and Wizzy. He said, had to take a moment to acknowledge the truth. Broken men almost destroyed everything I was building. The amount of work and time wasted never again. I'm telling you, man. I'm gonna tell you right now, the bro women are when they're women when a woman is broken, it's damn near impossible for her to acknowledge it. It's always looking somewhere else. The hardest person to acknowledge is the woman in the mirror. And that is the main holdup. So when you ladies, when I ask you, what do you bring to the table? And you want to talk about your degrees and your this and your that. Doesn't matter if you're broken. If we cannot do anything with it. Doesn't matter if, if you're broken. We can't do anything with it. Yeah. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Christina. Hi, how are you? Doing good. How are you? Good. What do you got for me? Um, I just wanted to say thank you for making this topic. Um, I almost lost my husband, my best friend, um, by acting this way. Okay. Like I couldn't, ex like I couldn't appreciate um, everything that he was always doing for me. Mm -hmm. in life and I almost lost him but it wasn't until after I had um, my daughter that I realized um, um, how much I need to love myself um, right. and when I started loving myself and everything then I started to realize um, what a good man actually is um, uh, how many children do you have uh, one child oh good um, did you go to therapy no, I have not gone to therapy yet, but that's my next step. Okay. Um, and how is it, how has this knowledge improved or uh, impacted your uh, relationship with you? What does your husband have to say about this? Um, we've talked a lot about it and he's asked me um, everything that he needs to know. Um, he mm -hmm. thinks that I'm in a better place and he's just glad that I finally saw the light basically um because otherwise he was gonna be like you know okay by forever so well do you do you want to share i mean nobody uh what 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 were some of the kind of things that you would say you were doing if you don't mind sharing a little bit um sure no i don't mind um it was back when i was with my baby father um Mm -hmm. I would just put up with a lot of just unnecessary BS, um, running back to him every time we break up, putting up with cheating, um, putting up with fighting, arguing, and putting up with um, like physical abuse and violence and just keep going back to him over and over. And it was like a three-year relationship, just being a pick me, like just. Were you, were you with your husband at the time? No, I was not with him at the time. Oh, okay. Well. Well, I'm glad that you find, I'm glad when any of you ladies start to see the light, um, because, you know, I don't think men in general are asking for much, um, this little cooperation, that's it. So all the best, sis, I hope it works out for you and getting therapy is always good. Even if you've done the work, right. stay proactive on it. Congratulations. Exactly. Thank you much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Yeah. Uh, she said she loved the emotional roller coaster. Here's the thing, you know, the imprint, the imprint is hard for women to deal with. Imprint is in 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 general what we talk about. The imprint is the 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 first man you love, the first man 
your 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 first the guy who took your virginity the first man you truly loved your your first man you had a baby with set the standard basically um yeah everybody after him uh was your second choice and see here's the thing as a man i know that any woman i meet i am not her first choice let's just be real brothers like ike brothers like myself i realize when i meet you i'm not your first choice although i may be your best option i'm not your first choice and at best I will be 80% of what it is you need better. See, men are far more realistic. We realize that, you know, you ladies have tons of opportunity. But the problem is this whole scarcity, the fear, the brokenness. Women today fear being hurt more than any other time in history. Ladies, listen to what I'm about to say. Your tolerance, your pain tolerance is laughable. You have women who will bro- will blow up relationships and situations just because somebody texts the wrong way. A misunderstanding. You must be built of stronger stuff to have Serious relationships. But again, when you're dealing with Frankenstein, this person, that person, this person, that person, ladies, you know which man to run to when you're in your particular mood. But the thing is, you can only have one. I saw the sign. Come on, ladies, call in. Uh, The call line is open, ladies. Join the show. If you have a question or a comment, you're free to, to jump on, ladies. Yeah. Here's the thing. That's because most have been used to sex. That's not true. Okay. See, here's another thing. Um, you're not going to... This whole notion of perfection... This list is another way to keep you stuck, keep you scared, keep you in your in your space, because as long as no one's perfect, you never have to try. Think about it. What was some of the stuff Stefan said? A thorough man stands up and for demands that you level up. And how many of these channels, these uh, these channels on YouTube are talking about leveling up, leveling up, leveling up, leveling up? No. All you must you must, if you're in the presence of a, a, a thorough man, he demands that you level up to be in his presence. How many of these level up channels can you see that are run by women who have leveled up? I don't see any of them. I have not, I hear nice I hear lots of stories, but I don't see any women running these level up channels that I've seen who have leveled up. I never see any receipts, any field work. How many of you ladies will be willing to sit down with a matchmaker to see what matches you? If you want to know, call in. I've been asked about, uh, I've been actually approached by many matchmakers across the country and actually one out of London. Um, and I'm thinking about it, but I don't, I don't know if I want to be a matchmaker. I think I will leave that to other people, but vetting people, helping people understand what, where they are is something I am pretty that gum good at. But if you, but if you wanted to know, call in, let's see if I were if I were a matchmaker, would you? Oh, how about this? Would you sit down in front of a matchmaker to see where you stand? Felicia, go ahead.
Mm, they call in. They're just dropping. Uh, who is this like, next caller, bro? Hey, man. Who is he talking about, bro? <laughs> Some of you guys, man. I swear to God. All right. So, here we go. Boop, 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 boop. You guys are going to have to keep it polite in the in the comment section, man. If you guys type in all caps, you're going to get timed out by the system. Um, Ivy, you're up. Then next, Rochelle. Then next, um, 832. Hello, Ivy. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. What do you got for me? Um, I was just listening while I was working. And um, I was trying to keep up with the comments and just the whole conversation. And I would say I um, probably used to be broken. I've been following you for almost a month now. So I'm in the danger zone and I need to lose some weight. Um, but I would be interested in living with a matchmaker. Okay. So, all right. One well, of the one things I would say is you, ladies got to make it much more simple when you communicate. So you gave me a lot. You, you, you say you might be, you used to be broken, but you're not, you're in the danger zone. And ultimately you want to see, uh, what you would match with. Is that what you ultimately want to know? Yeah. Okay. How old are you? Um, Almost 31. Almost 31. Um, what do you, do you want to be married? Um, yes. Why the hesitation? Well, for a long time, I felt like it wasn't. Now now you gotta get, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep on, you gotta keep on talking. I got, hold on. You gotta keep on talking. I got eight people to get through. So you can't take long pauses. I felt like I didn't need to. Okay. Um, so that it kind of just turned into, well, if it happens, it happens. All right. Do you have any children? No. Um, so do you want to have children? If the circumstance is right, yes. What does that mean? For me, I would want to be um, close to one of our parents to help with child care. Um, it's, it's very expensive and just in general I would want to have my family close to one of our families I wouldn't want to be just out with my husband in some random state just us okay I'm not I'm not clear ma'am on what you're saying you, you why wouldn't you want to have kids or what circumstance would you want to have children one in a in a situation where we could afford to do it um, and then also be close to family Okay, so you don't want a relationship. Because you're already starting off with, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it comes. And then, do you want to have kids? Well, it has to be under these specific situations. No, here you go. Bye, dog. <coughs> you don't match. I'm telling you right off the rip, you don't match. And you, do you know why I said that? Why don't she mute herself? Lady, unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah. You said I found it too unsure. Yeah, I mean, if you're being serious, um, which I have to take that you are, um, but my question is this. At 31, you just want to work and be by yourself until you die. I feel like I have been on that path, and I that's didn't a yes, really that's a, try that's to a plan yes or no. That's a yes or no. I'm on that that path. Yeah. Do you? I said, is that what you want? No. See, that's why everything I've asked you, ma'am, is what do you want? And you've told me what you basically settled for because your reasons. So again, I'll ask you: Do you want to be married or no? That's a yes or no. Yeah. I don't. So what's the, where's the fear coming from? Um, I have always kind of had it. I think I was just scared to be um, vulnerable. Okay, you need therapy. 
You, you're talking too slow, ma'am. I got to move on to the next person. Um, I, you can stay there and I'll get back to you. Um, but you got to be a little bit quicker. Um, Rochelle, go ahead. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Hi. Are you a woman from Chicago? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one that you had to call out when I made the comment where I said about uh, that men are broken too. I just want to, you know, make sure that you and other people understand. I wasn't saying that as a deflection from the fact that women um, are very broken nowadays. But what I was saying is that women, I do think oftentimes uh, will try to fix broken men too which often leads to their brokenness if they haven't been broken already. And so when you were talking about the monster and how women take pieces of men from this person, that person or whatever, and they put together this monster, that to me was like broken pieces. You're putting together a broken man because he's not whole. He doesn't really exist in the way that you put him together because you would have had to put all these different pieces. So that's what I was meaning when I, when I said that men are broken too. I'm not deflecting from the fact of but what but the pro but see but see about. broken men but see broken men should mm -hmm. not have access to sex or relationships. No, they shouldn't. But You're but right. but they do because you ladies have sex with them. Yes, we do, and I think oftentimes it's because women often get into this feeling of thinking that we can change them. That's the problem. And uh, instead well, of well, well. No, it's a, I think it's a problem if women if a woman no, well, thinks she can fix a man. But but again, why would you need to okay. All right. So when we last talked, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that you went to Johns Hopkins. And yes. what's your highest level of uh attainment? Bachelor's My master? Master's. Master's. My master's, yeah. I'm a PhD. All right. I so, don't have no PhD. <laughs> well, it's a it's a placeholder. And you still you still have a cam that where's your photo? Oh, you I'm laying in bed. Like it's it's dark. I mean you send a photo, but now. but here's the thing. Oh, you can go look at my picture. No, I mean it's on my I, I will, I will, but so if you were with a guy who you earned more than, um, and you were higher up the socioeconomic ladder, mm -hmm. what was the attraction? Um well, I think, you know, when you mentioned that before, to me, I mean, we just we just had a really, really good connection. And even though he did not necessarily have a degree, he was a federal law enforcement agent. And okay. as we know, in law enforcement, they don't make a lot of money sometimes. Uh -huh. So it wasn't that he was a drug dealer or anything like that. He just I, I didn't have I a never, degree, but he but he okay. was in college. He, OK, he, but but OK, what is the what is the man's purpose? A man is supposed to be a provider before anything else. Mm -hmm. Provider, protector. Yep. Prophet or priest. Those are the three things. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're a woman and you're making, what, were you making double what he was making? Triple what? Um, He was probably at about 75. And at that time, I was about 105. Okay. So. My question is, if you're as attractive as you say you are, and where were you at before Chicago? I was in New York. I lived in Harlem. Okay, and I'm I'm about to move there, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Ma okay, so why were the men? Why were the thorough black men? And I know there are a lot of brothers in, in New York City who earn well. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you date them? And see, one of the first things that, and before you answer that. I asked you a question. You said, well, I really never was that motivated by money. I didn't really care that much about his money. Something along those lines. Um, what I said was, it, you know, it didn't have to be somebody that was making equal or more than me. I mean, when, when we were dating, like I said, he was in law enforcement. He right. owned a home. He owned right. a home before me. Um, and I moved into his house. And he was a, a provider. So even though he didn't have the six figure salary like me. And even though he didn't have the education, he still provided. But when um, I asked you, but when I asked you what you wanted your husband to make, you said 200,000. 200, so, yeah. so stop. You were the guy for five years mm -hmm. who was not as educated as you was not as accomplished as you 
not on your mm -hmm. socioeconomic level, level, and you gave him the world. Okay. Then a man who a man who's going to get you five plus years later has to make three times what he's making. Mm -mm. Uh, he doesn't have to. You said you he wanted your husband. Oh, okay. You said you wanted your husband. Okay. Man. I know what I want, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what I want all exists. I can probably find a really, or have well, a really it does great man. I mean, here's a, but the thing is, it does exist. The thing is, <laughs> how about this? Two hundred thousand dollars is what I said. How much would how much would how much would you want your husband to make? Two hundred thousand dollars. Why didn't you just say seventy five? If it doesn't matter. Um, I think because when you get a little bit older and you want certain things in your life and you start to think about what you want, you're like, okay, I need a little bit more. Um, but I am not that much of I'm I'm not this. I don't have a a list as you've talked about. So if, if I want some, if I want someone to make $200,000, fine, I want him to, but if he comes to me, he's a great man and he's making 80,000 or 90. But what I'm ultimately say, you know saying, what, what I'm man, saying, what, no, what I'm saying, I'm not gonna talk you can't overtalk, you can't overtalk. Sorry. Me. That, that's not going to, I don't think I'm trying to overtalk you. I think I have a delay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, well, so here's the thing. It's not <laughs> the, the issue I'm having is you're having theoretical versus practical. The guy you were with earned less and he cheated on you and he wasn't and you and you were saying basically he wasn't that great of a guy. So So now yeah. I've learned. And I but, think that in But what have you what have you learned? What have you learned? What I've learned is that it is not okay for me to like your first caller that called in or not, yeah, the first caller where she was saying she had to turn around and, and kind of look at herself. That that self-reflection is very important after you go through something like that to figure out why, what I did, why I allowed myself to stay. It's not his fault. It's me having to do the self-reflection to understand what were my insecurities that caused me to stay in that situation. And that's so the at 38, that I, so I at 38, I am so at, so at 38 years old, yes. right? And... Mm -hmm. If you were to have children, you would need to get started pretty soon. But I don't necessarily know if I want to have children. Okay. Is it because of the age or because of no. the desire? No, it's just that it's the desire. Okay. I don't know if I want to have children. All right. So, which leads to another question. What's the reason to get married if kids aren't involved? Well, I think intimacy and having a partnership uh, is the reason to get married. If I want to have children, I can just go out here and have a child with somebody and not be married to them. Thank you. But I believe I, I like uh, the okay. idea uh, of being in a partnership. Uh, right. And the longest relationship you had before the, the federal law enforcement guy was what? Um, that was my, um, ex fiance. And why did you guys get married? Um, I ended that because he was in, um, Kuwait and he, um, I mean, it's a little personal, but he, he got, um, he got on some stuff. He had some substance abuse issues that he's developed while he was in the Did he get treatment? military. Um, he's probably gotten it now, but he didn't at that time. Okay. Did you ask him to get treatment? Yes, I did. Did he decline it? He said he didn't have a problem. Okay. Um, was he functioning? Was he was he working? Uh, yeah, he was in the military. He suffered from PTSD really bad. So okay, I mean, well, I'm at, okay, because I, I used to be an alcohol and drug counselor. I'm, there's so many people in this country who are addicted. It's not even funny. The Midwest yeah. is raw. Is the Midwest is ravaged by it. So drug abuse, drug use does not freak me out uh, because it's no it's a disease no different than anything else in my opinion and there are many people who are functioning alcoholics addicts who don't think they have problems and i'm trying to understand was it causing was he was he actually an addict or was he just using and if did he say he didn't have a problem because at the end of the day ma'am no one's perfect is all i'm saying and right. if you had a fiance and you broke that off uh and you were with this guy for five years and he ended up being unfaithful it sounds like you've had a track record of some some yeah, difficult relationships. relationships. So, mm -hmm. and what I'm getting from you is 
you you seem to be a kind of domineering kind of personality and what do you who, and that does not work with the kind of men that earn more or can actually be, put a woman in a position to live a softer life so it simply because, does not i'm having a con but i'm having a conversation with you now how we're how we're having a conversation is different how i would have a conversation no it's with not somebody i'm in a relationship no, okay with. no and see that you wouldn't but the thing is see one this is one of an audience this is one of the fallacies that many women think they can turn femininity on and off. And this is something that any femininity instructor, any dating coach will tell you, no, you are who you are. We like to believe this, but the thing is a man who's on the level I'm talking about would, would vibe you, perceive you from across the room, even in their interactions to where you would not even get to the point to where you could decide to turn it on and off. I'm telling you that. I have, the men I'm talking about are my colleagues and my clients. And we talk about women like you often who think you can but come into, listen. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. Because I'm not, the, I mean, due respect, ma'am, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm talking to you as a courtesy and it's not about being right or wrong. I'm right. You know, you, I know men mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and your track record says you have not dated men on the level I'm talking about. Dated or been in a relationship with? Been in a relationship with. Okay. Because dated I have. Right. And anybody, again, this the whole deal with, date. And see, one of the mis misconceptions, especially with women as they get older, think because you can date one, you cannot keep one. You have but masculine, not, you have masculine, you have masculine energy, man. So it goes right down to, and this whole guys, the sign, the shame, insults, guilt, the need to be right tends to be really strong with, with advanced degree women. Does it I didn't need, say I was right. I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't say, I'm right, oh, Kevin. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 Michelle. Here's the it's thing. Okay. It's I, I know it's okay because <laughs> this is not my first rodeo at this. So what I'm ultimately it's saying certainly is certainly not what I, mine either. And this is what I kind of do. I'm a political. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a PhD. I swear. Being right does not make you a winner. All right. Uh, where are we at, uh, Mimi? And guys, oh. ultimately, oh, guys, and ultimately, that's what you have to do when you're dealing with just. just hey, how are you? I'm good. Nice to be talking to you again. I love your channel. Well, thank you. What do you got for me? Uh, so basically, I wanted to know if the current, um, if I'm treating my current boyfriend as a monster, I guess, okay. um, or if it's like a monster situation. So um, he's a very good man. And this has probably been the best relationship I've ever been in. How long have you guys been together? But, um, like three and a half months. All right. And how many arguments have you had? Um, we don't really argue. Um, it's more like I, I notice I, I do some things wrong and I end up having to apologize for it because I'm like, I, I did wrong on my part, but we don't really like argue. Mm -hmm. So what's the question? Um, so like he's a really good man. Um, and he's working really hard to, um, because he, he's said that he wants to provide a certain lifestyle and like get married and have kids. And, mm -hmm. um, he wants me to be able to stay home with our children or whatever. Um, but he doesn't know exactly when he'd be able to do that. He's hoping like by next year, or it could even be two years and I'm 25 now. And I would like, I'm, I really, well, I don't know. Want I don't understand. I don't understand what the question ultimately is though. You say if you're treating him like a would, it be, uh, would it be bad like if like I like even though he's a good man, I want to like cut things off because I feel like I could find someone that would want to have kids and provide that life sooner. Oh. Uh, you mean 
would you also um he's, hold on. he's white and this is the first guy white guy I ever dated and i'm okay so would you be willing so would you be willing to are you going to be willing to tell him that up front i mean are you going to go say hey boyfriend um i dig you this has been great but I, uh it's not going to work for me and i yes. wish you the best I, uh, I i am willing to say that and we we spoke about it a little bit like the past two days we've been talking about it well um and if you're willing to do that if you, if you if you're willing to do that then fine i mean look you don't have to, you're not you're not obligated to marry somebody just because you're dating them but what you don't what but what would be tacky is if you if you decided to try to monkey branch that's what would be tacky that's it's, what I'm also worried about. But like, I feel like that's what I would be doing if I don't wait. But it's not that I don't want to wait for any other reason other than like, I just don't want to be like too old. Wait a minute. You don't want to wait like it's too old. Like, because he said he doesn't know if he'd be able to provide that life in the next one or two years. And mm -hmm. like, I, I'm ready to have a kid by like next year. Okay. So, all right, well, here's the ultimate thing. You can do what you want to. Um, just don't string somebody along. Um, and <laughs> do you have other prospects? Um, not at the moment, but I feel like I learned enough from this relationship that like, I'm realizing now that there was a lot of good men that I turned down. And, um, I've, I feel like I learned a lot through this relationship that those other people, um, could have been prospects or I could find new prospects. Okay. Much easier well, then break it off on it, break it off with them. But don't, with, the thing is, it doesn't sound like you, you don't, you don't sound like you're really into him anyway. So, um, just break it off with him, make a clean breakup and, and take your chances out here. Okay. Um, thank you. That would be the best way to do it. Keep your karma clean. All right. Okay. Take it easy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You what? Know, I don't know what else you can tell somebody. Uh, Erica. Erica, unmute yourself. Mm-mm. Well, she's not unmuting herself, so. So, um, yeah, some people want to just see you argue, go back and forth. Ah, nah, I'm good. Hello, who am I speaking with? What do you got for me, Erica? Still unmarried. Um, I would say I'm more traditional than feministy. Mm -hmm. My question is, um, I live in Los Angeles, so where would, okay, especially now that it's COVID era, how would I find a good man without going online? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> okay. So that's my only. You don't. And, you, and, 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 no, and no should you. I mean, you live in Los Angeles. Los Angeles dating is difficult already. How tall yeah. are you? Um, five four. Dress size? Uh, eight. How much so did you average. weigh last time you weighed yourself? Um, I think I'm like one forty. No, 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 not, not five four. Mm -hmm. and dress size eight. Mm -hmm. Uh, look, ladies, you and to everyone else out there, no disrespect, but you're gonna have to get out and compete too. Men aren't mm -hmm. gonna come knock on your door and say, "Hi, I'm a good man." Mm -hmm. good men aren't made aren't born we have to make ourselves that way mm -hmm. and you ladies gonna have to put yourselves out there and make yourselves available so all the best though thank you so yeah all the best you know i don't know why people think they should be able to just not on i mean online dating is a reality the world is the way it is people and we're going to have to kind of get a, a adapted uh, to the new environments and just move move the way it is. You're not going back. Time's not going to go back to the way it was. Claudia, what's going on? Hi, Mr. Samuels. How are you? What do you got for me? 
Uh, I don't know if you remember me, but uh, I called uh, your program. I'm Dominican. I'm the lady that's been 21 years married. Oh, yeah, I remember. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to say something about not the last caller, but the one before that, the one that mm -hmm. you were telling her that men know a lot about a woman just mm. by seeing how she handles, how she moves, mm -hmm. you cannot be more right about it. Well, you cannot be ahead. more right about it. Go ahead. Tell her. <laughs> kind of, I, I, just, I, want, I was going to call yesterday because I really like your program yesterday. It was, um, it was true. It, women are confused. Oh, yes. To totally. And they are also confused about the meaning of a commitment and mm -hmm. relationships and marriage. She's, these women are able to make a commitment at work mm -hmm. and keep it, don't break it, and uphold it. Oh, yes. But the, but the biggest commitment, the most important commitment of their lives, they're willing to break it for stupid reasons, lightly. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't even like think it twice. When you say that 80% of the divorces are initiated by women, I think my grandmother and my mother are turning in their graves. <laughs> really? Because that's like the most important thing ever. You, how can you do that so lightly? Well, in this country, women have been told that men are expendable, we're unnecessary, that, that they are the prize, that it is our job as a man to come along and be Prince Charming and she should just sit there and be bestowed upon, that they can go out and do whatever they want, take all the time to go up here, get this degree, that degree, this job, that job. And then if they decide when they decide they want to turn around to the tree and grab a man off and live happily ever after. And if he does not make her happy, she can just pull a lever, push the button, and go find another one. So women have really low respect for men in this country. And you, the point you made is I'm a point I make often women. You can commit to college you can commit to your job. You there are so, that's why this whole I'm a PhD is so funny. I'm it's a PhD. To, to become a PhD or a master's, it takes focus. But yet the relational skills of women on these levels are polar opposites. And and let me tell you, when you say that people should get therapy, everybody needs therapy. Mm -hmm. I, I come from a family that my mother and my grandmother were married till their death do us part. Mm -hmm. I understood but, that 80% of the marriage, like they told me, was on my shoulders. But when I got married to a divorced man with two kids, I what, got into therapy. Wait, hold on. Did, hold on. You said your family told you that 80% of the marriage was on your shoulders? My, my grandmother and my mother used to say, the 80% of the marriage is on the woman's shoulders. See, that's not something they, that is not something that American women hear. The American not, women hear mm -hmm. that it is the man's responsibility to keep you. They hear happy wife, happy life. That's what they hear. And that's what the media tells us. That's what the movies, everything reinforces the fact that men are dumb. We don't know what we're doing and that the women are the smart ones and it, it's bizarro land, so it doesn't surprise me that women like you or where you're from really can't relate to what's going on here. But you're the women in your area of the world are far happier and living uh, versus women here, and they supposedly have more. So, thanks for calling in and clearing. Let me tell you. Hold on, Corey, you're next. Go ahead, Claudia. Uh, final statement. Okay, and let me tell you when you. Also, I find um, women, when you say that, I, I'm going to say that 
when you say that women there are told that they're intelligent and the men are spendable and I think they're not getting the picture. Like you said in one program, nice life, it, providing you with stability. You have to do everything else to make that man happy. Well, because he's giving you what you need. The internet connection is unstable at this point. Okay, thank you, Claudia. Appreciate it. Thank you for calling in. Um, thank you. Let's see. Going to mute. Uh, go ahead, um, Corey. Hello. Hi, Kevin. Hey, what Hi, do you Kevin. got? Can you hear me? Yeah. What do you got for me? So, you said about the matchmaker portion. Uh -huh. I know that many people beforehand hasn't talked about this part but you were talking about that and mm. what i would link up with i was wanting to know so. oh well i i would have to be able to see you um but yep i can start with you yeah uh let me do this in just a second because the, okay. the, the internet connection is kind of choppy here um okay. are you looking to get married though yes i am <laughs> all right um well, let's do that. All right. How old are you? I'm now recently 29. This is actually my birthday. <laughs> okay. I don't see who you. All right. So uh, without seeing a photo, I can't really see anything. So it's okay. just, it, it's just, uh, 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 yeah, you got, you got to, I got to see you. Yeah, um, of course. I tried to do that before. So. Uh, okay. Um, let me see. Second. Let me see if I can start this real quick. Let me do this. Uh, Hannah, go ahead while well, she's trying to get that started. Oh, okay. Hannah, go ahead while well, she's trying to get this. What's going on, Hannah? Hi, Kevin. I'm not going to be long. I like like always. <laughs> go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> I just want to quickly say that car analogy was hilarious to me. And then you, you said it again today um, because after my divorce, I ended up getting myself a 2017 right. <laughs> Mercedes and it was, it had 35,000 miles on it. And it was 2017. It's, it's funny when you said that again. Um, so it kind of represents my life. 11 years of mileage on me, two kids. I have literally, I'm going to get what I, you know, can get, but at this time I'm not looking and I'm really looking and exploring that, you know, you woke me up, of course, as always with the uh, working on things with the ex-husband, because mm -hmm. I am talking to someone right now, but I'm also, I also let my ex-husband know that I'm doing that. Right. And it's just, right. it's just wonderful how uh, free flowing we talk. And he's just like, we just our communication is just so much better um and well it sounds like you have sounds like lot. you have more of an appreciation for what you had you know you know what honestly kevin i've never said this on the live but um i would have never left my husband um it wasn't anything superficial or scandalous or anything cheating none of that um, we were best friends. I was very grateful when I was with him. He's aware. He was always aware. I just think that there was some um, something that came up with um, a medical malpractice and there was um, some mental illness in the mm. family that came up. Something came up. He was the top of his game, like really up there. And um, because of that, it wasn't safe. So it was a situation where it wasn't safe. And I was his caregiver oh, okay. for two years. Yeah, I wasn't. I would have never left. I'm very, very loyal. And just like the woman before uh, just called uh, my family, the way we grew up, my mom was married for 35 years plus, And we, we were always told that the woman takes majority of the load. Like, mm. um, so I would have, uh, if I stick well, to someone, I'm, I'm there. Well, um, I just want to quickly, quickly, please, please, if you could let me know. Um, so I went on a rant the other day on Instagram and just want to, say that the comments and messages were insane the responses were basically the reason why platforms like yours even exist mm -hmm. so i just feel like us women were able to take like a, if we can just take a long hard look at ourselves and just take a moment to look inward mm -hmm. and what we're doing wrong instead of just finding flaws in men all of the all of our problems would go away. A lot of the time it's just a lot of generalizations of other men and it's never really specific issues that they have. And another thing that we do is that we allow the emotional state that we're in to dictate how the day goes. And yep. it's always ruined. 
it always it, it always ruins the man's day. And I've seen this over and over because I'm I'm considered the person that everybody comes to for advice. And I've gotten this um a childhood friend who just told me the other day. She said, All right, Hannah, oh, you can't well, yeah, give I, me I, advice I, because you're divorced. And yeah, yeah. I'm, Hannah, I gotta get to the next one. I appreciate it. I know, I know. I'm so sorry, Kevin. I, no problem. All Thanks. Right. Now, now she's got. Now, here's the thing: get back with your husband. Here, here, okay, guys, understand something. Women make mistakes; they're human. And here's the thing: as much as I talk about women, guys, they are okay. We're men, right? Alpha males. You know, men going your own way. Save yourself. All right, we we're dogs. They're cats. You can walk a dog. A dog is loyal. A cat, you can't walk it, and they come when they want to. That's their nature. RP is supposed to be able to understand the nature, not get mad at it for its nature. Women are emotional. If you're going to deal with women, they are going to be emotional, some more so than others, but that's how they come. They are going to... Their emotions, are, they're going to run their logic through their emotions. Even the smartest of them, that's how they come. They're going to make emotional errors. That's how they come. And if we can't accept that they're going to make error and mistakes, you cannot deal with one. It is, it is ridiculous for men to try to expect women to think like men. That is not how they come. So, yes, when women awake or come to something, if you really, you're going to have to allow human beings some grace. I made a mistake. This was wrong. I regret doing this. That is how you have something substantial. If it's everybody has to be perfect, then everything is going to be over three to six months. It's never going to work. It's always going to be off and on because no one can be perfect forever. Eventually, you're going to make a mistake. Life is going to happen. And it's that part that makes life worth living because not everybody is willing to do that. So as a man, I get it. I, I'm, I'm on, you know, I'm on your side, but guys, I don't expect women to be men. I just expect them to start looking in the mirror and having accountability and ownership and honesty. If ladies, if you're afraid, I'm afraid. I've been hurt. I'm vulnerable. I don't know how to do this. This is new to me. Don't just shut down or act like it's not that big a deal or go that way. Men are not expecting you to be perfect. And stop and even when you're right, ladies, there's a way to talk to me. And so thank you, thank you, Claudia, for calling in and telling Rochelle that, look, you don't get to the way in which you interact with men is the way you interact with men. It's not something you turn on and off. And I get where you were coming from. It's a defensive mechanism. It's what keeps you safe and makes you feel secure to feel like you can knuckle and go back and forth with me. But it doesn't. Doesn't ma. You're not my you're not my opponent. You're you're not no woman is my opponent. You're not my enemy. So feeling like you can get in the ring and verbally spar with me and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not fighting you. That's why I did I just muted it and said, no need to slap in the taps and everything because I know where she is. Lastly. If you are truly what you say you are as men, it is our responsibility to lead, their responsibility to be led. That means we take the first arrow, the first slings. The thing is, if they're, if they're following, they should appreciate what we're doing for them. If they're willing to get in their place to follow, whether it's romantically one-to-one -one, or whether it's just following men in general that's all we can ask for and we have to do our part but i think most of you guys would be willing to hear what i'm saying if you really truly saw 
women beginning to be cooperative with men across the board, not just the men they find worthy or who deserve their respect or this or that. That's why I stay so much on men about doing what you're supposed to do, going where you're going. Look, man, there is nothing as attractive to a woman as a man who's on his purpose, because that's where your North Star needs to be. We cannot. I will tell you part of the reason why my, my relationships failed. Part of the reason why my relationships failed, because as a as a man that was raised by a single mother, I saw my mother taking care of all the responsibility. I saw women doing everything. And even though I made, I made money and had resources, I got quote unquote comfortable and my wife who, who saw the same thing would start asking for, allowed, allowed things to be put on her from a leadership standpoint they really weren't hers to be to be dealt with. And even though she volunteered, nope. Bottom line is, guys, my man Donovan Sharp, his girlfriend Devin now works for him. One of the best things you can do as a man is employ your woman. That keeps her out of the corporate environment, out of the responsibility for other people, that keeps you in a leadership position, and that makes you things work together. One of the worst things we can do is put responsibility on on them that's not built for those shoulders. They have hips, not shoulders. So y'all know where I'm coming from, but you got to understand that the message that they've been given, the world does not owe them understanding, ladies. I get it. But as men, you cannot expect them to be us. Now you're going to have to make up your mind. Do you want women in your life or not? Some of you don't want them, and I support that. If you are uh, MGT, if you are that way or SY, whatever, if you're all into the transactionary thing, hey, man, one love. But 80% of men want women. They want girlfriends, wives, significant others, families, children, legacy. And I'm not going to act as though that's not the majority of guys. But they want it with a woman that wants to be with them, feminine, fit, cooperative, single. But he has to do it. We got to do our part. And the thing is, once you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you have every right as a man to, to stand on it and demand none less. Shout out to Stefan. Once you are a thorough man, you have a right to stand in the gap and saying, I am better than all these other men. And I demand you level up to meet me. And if you can't, fine, go over there. No harm, no foul. Like you, would like to kick it with you. When you get when you get yourself together, maybe we can do this again. But I'm not lowering. That, that, that'll keep your respect up, your eye on the prize, and make her realize that, you know what? He can't be moved for a little sugar. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Women are not my enemy. They're not your enemy either. Hello? All right. Okay. Yeah. First name. Say again. Jay, just a letter. It's fine. Because my, my name is. Okay, no problem. Membership. That's why. Go ahead. What do you got for me? It's nice to meet you. And I see the topic is about dating monsters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was, just watch, I was actually just watching. Um, I mean, this is how I feel. I can definitely see both sides of the spectrum. I can see where men come from. And I can see where women come from. Um, I'm a human and I have my own issues as well. And I just want to mm -hmm. say that just take a chance. Just take a chance. Don't be so quick to guard yourself. And whatever has happened in your past that is making you guard yourself, try to figure that out. And 
just try to be a better person. I hope I'm making sense because I know you can come, you know. Go ahead. Say what you have to say. Don't get hard on people. I just, I, I just want, I, I, the reason why I'm speaking is because me, myself, I'm the, I'm trying to work on certain things myself with being guarded. And it, it's very, very hard. Who, and who are you telling, who are you telling to take a chance? Hey, Jalen, knock it off, man. Both? Go ahead. Are you telling men or women? Yeah. And whoever you are, Jalen, behave yourself. Go ahead. Don't be dis- don't be disrespectful, especially <laughs> to my. Mm, I got it. I got in my head. Please don't do that. <laughs> I got it. So, um, <laughs> you telling people to put take a chance? Uh, are you in therapy or anything? Counseling? Not at the moment. I'm listen. I'm getting there. My mom passed away when I was nineteen, and mm-hmm. you know, I've I've just I've basically been on my own, and I've I've learned a lot about the world, in my opinion, and. Mm-hmm. Number one, nobody cares. That's number yeah. one. Number one. And number two, work on being a better you. Like that's just it. And I'm I mean it from both sides. I mean it from the men. All right, so, all right, sis. Your phone is kind of breaking up, so uh I don't know what's I going on. But, okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, t- here's the thing. Take a ch- look, guys. Look, I make I want to make something very clear. In my comment section, this is my platform. I try to keep it balanced. I'm not going to let women come over here and, and talk about, look, I, this is not a MGTOW platform. It's not. I don't want to see all that in my comment section in capitals. I You're not supposed to type in all caps in my chat room. Don't come in my chat room on your crusade. Believe what you want, but this is my platform and my philosophy and what I think is what it is. If you want to talk about something different, go over there, but respect my platform. And if I have to call you out, that's a problem. So um, the whole notion of take a chance. um, I think I understand what she was trying to say. Censorship. Yep. Let me show you what it is. Censorship. You've just been censored. Yep, this is not a democracy. Yep, it's censorship. <laughs> you exactly. I don't know where you guys get off thinking that you you have a channel. Go say what you want over there. Anybody else? Anyone else? If you type in all caps, you're going to get a... So, take a chance. Um... If you're talking about interactions with human beings, yes. But if it, that's where it extends. Um, relationships make a choice. But taking a chance, no one wants to be on. The problem is right now, all the controversy and confusion, both people are being guarded and secure. Look, some of the most diehard RP people are my friends, but they all have relationships. My boy Donovan is probably one of the most diehard RP people I know. But he has a, I met his woman and their situation works. So I'm, I hear you guys coming in here talking and unless you can show me a strategy that you have in your personal life that's working with women, you're just talking. I don't care what it is. What is your strategy for interacting with half of the population in your life? So understand something. That's where we are. Uh, Fatima, I can't see you. Your audio never connected. Um, ladies, stop trying to cobble together. Cobble together one man out of eight. You're going to have to pick. You're going to have to pick if you ever want to have a shot of having anything other than you know, it's one of those saddest things to hear is hear women who become like 40, 50 years old and ask them, what's the longest relationship you ever had? One year. But you've had five or six one year relationships. It's like looking at somebody's resume and saying, 
Hi, Fatima. Um, this job requires 10 years experience and you've been in the industry for 15 years, but you've been an account executive for 10 years, but you spent two years on account executive here, two years on account executive there. That means you got 10 years of the same two years experience. Many of you have experience with women, but it's we experience with men, but it's the same one year replicated seven times. We got to go deeper. Go ahead, Fatima. What you got for me? I'm a little scared to talk. That's okay. Um, Why? I because I'm, I'm like so shy. But okay. Um, I just wanted to get your input. Like, I'm a new subscriber, and I've been watching a couple of your videos, and I like how like brutally honest you are. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to like get your input on like my chances of ever like getting married. So I'm 24. Okay. And I have a daughter okay. and I have a baby out of wedlock and I didn't realize the mistakes that I was making like when I was making them. And now like that my eyes are open to like everything that happened in the choices and decisions that I made, like, I'm like, like, oh my so what, God. So what do you, so what do you, so you're just talking to me. Mm -hmm. Don't panic. You're just talking to me. Let me go ahead and turn on my camera so you can see. So I don't bite. Um, what, what do you want with a man? Do you want to be married? What do you yes. want? I right. like, I do want to be married. I wanted to be married to her father, but. Um, okay. It didn't work. It didn't work. All right. So do you want to have any more children? I'm open to it. I love being a mother and I love to, you know, take okay. care of um, Being open, does that mean you do want more or you're I okay? Do. Okay. So all I really need for you to tell me is what you really want. You're um, just talking to me. You want to be married and you want, how many more children would you like to have? I know this sounds crazy, but... I I would like to have like four or five more. Okay. Um, All right. It's less is fine, but I like okay. I literally love the the household being big and just family oriented and stuff like that. Where, where are you where where are you from? I'm from Memphis. I was gonna say you got to be from down south. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, were your mom and dad married? They were. All right. Um, and was dad in the household? He was, but my mom and my dad got divorced when I was young. Okay. So I saw a little bit of it, but I didn't. I wasn't you, like raised. Do you have any siblings? I do. Brothers, sisters, what? I have brothers and sisters. I have a lot of them. Um, mm. My mom married him when he had nine kids. And she had me and my younger brother by him. And my mother came into the marriage with two kids. So your father has nine and your mother has four, two by your father. Right. And then he had two more after her. So he has 11 total. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like my dad. We might be really. Like <laughs> All right. So Maybe. it makes sense that you would be open to having a larger family because one, you're a black woman from the South and you've seen large families. Plus Memphis is its own place. Yeah. Um, did you go to college? I did go to college, but but, but you didn't finish. I okay. Didn't. Um, um, so, oh, okay. Are you open to moving? Yes. Um, I just moved to Atlanta. All right. Okay. So, um, how tall are you? Five four. Uh, dress size. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's fine, y'all. I, I would tell you she's fine. I'm not going to put it on camera for you, but she's fine. Thank uh, you. Please listen. Um, yeah. So let's get brass tacks. Um, your child's father is how old? He's 32. 33. Okay. Sorry. 33. 33. Um, when you met him? I was 19 and he was 20. Right. Is that a wig or is that your hair? This is um, a sew-in, but I have okay. like natural long hair. So yeah, I see. I just don't like to deal with it. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm thirsty. I'll, I'll take care of you. So, all right. So, 
what does he do for a living? Because it matters. He is a music producer and he does Uber. Okay. And don't laugh at me because I'm, I'm not laughing at I'm not laughing at you. I'm not <laughs> laughing at you. Look, look, I'm not a I'm nice as long as you're nice to me. So you met a guy, he was older than you. Um, how many children does he have? Your your child's father. He has three children. In addition to yours? Yes. So he has four kids. Uh, it, it can't be future because he didn't drive a car. Okay. So <laughs> how long have you guys, how old is your daughter? She's two. And when was the last time you and your child's father were intimate? We were intimate in the beginning of September. We literally just broke up and I just moved to Atlanta. In September? Mm-hmm. All right. That's a problem. That's a problem Uh, because up until then, what you had going for you is you're above average. uh, You're on the pretty side. So you have that going for you and you have a a soft feminine approach. But the fact that you're still dealing with your child's father means that any man making the kind of money to be able to marry a woman and take a chance upon, because it will be a chance. And having additional children, you're still active with your child's father. Um, And it already did not work. So I have to ask, um, you guys just broke up. Yeah, we just broke up. And did you have any additional children? His his other children did. Were any of them born after your child? No, they were born before I got with him. Okay, so why are you guys not together? Because, honestly, it was a a very toxic relationship on both of our parts. More so mine was because I was like, I was misled by him. I put him before everybody and I wasn't listening to like. What do you mean toxic? Toxic meaning what? It's like, are you crazy? Uh, are you crazy? Do you do you I'm put? Not, well, I mean, have you been I arrested? Was crazy. I made. I, have you been I, arrested? I, no. Have you I mean, have I'm you damaged any property? That. Have you damaged no. any property? No. All right. So. But in in my mental health, I feel like that it was toxic because of the therapy sessions that we had. It was we you mean you and him or yes. Or, okay. So we tried to work it out and like go to therapy, but he mm-hmm. left therapy. He didn't want to do it anymore. But did he ever propose to you? Yes, we were engaged for like two I mean, years. What, he dropped to a, he dropped to a knee and proposed in public with yeah. a ring. And well, it was just in front of my mom. It wasn't in yeah. public. Or okay. Did he have a ring? Yeah. Did you accept? I did. So you want to marry him? I did want to marry him. I did. But after I said yes. um, So let me, let me stop you. right? Okay. Let me stop. You guys are together. How long? Two, three years? Five years. Five. Okay. Since I was 19. All right. So here's the issue. Almost five years. You have been with one man for five years and you have a child by him. He has significantly imprinted on you and you have the child you have just been out of your relationship not even 90 days conventional wisdom says it takes about a third of the time you are with somebody to get over them that means you are looking at about 18 months before you are really ready to date Because any man that comes behind your ex is going to be a rebound. I agree. I agree. All right. Um, But I was talking to my older brother and he, um, we were talking about this and Uh, I suggested that I wait for. Does your dad like your ex? No, nobody likes him, but. Well, it didn't sound. I mean, okay, but. All right. So. So you have to resolve a lot of things. One, why you chose a man that no one in your family liked. Why you decided to, you have to clear that out. 
And every man you deal with between now and getting really whole is going to be rebound. I don't expect you to not date between now and the next 18 months. I'm not foolish. But what I do expect women like yourself to do is be very honest with men. I am not really ready for a long-term relationship. You're 24, you're in Atlanta. I don't think you I think it'd be foolish to say you're not going to have sex for the next two years. <gasps> it's going to happen. The way you look, men are going to be trying to get in your drawers. That's just what's going to happen. But you have to finish this relationship. You have to decide if you're done with your child's father or if you want to continue to do this back and forth. But whatever it is, you cannot involve a man, uh, a, 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 another person in your in your drama. I would say that it sounds better to be done with it. He has three kids. Your kid. I don't. That's that's a whole lot. Indi was, individual therapy. I, 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 I individual I therapy. No, okay, but we, we got to keep moving. We got to keep moving, though. We can't. I mean, that, sure, you you yeah. you made mistakes, but we got to keep moving in life. Um, you got to get therapy. You got to get therapy and work through the issues of why you chose him, why you chose not to listen to your father, everybody else. Forgive yourself, forgive him, forgive your dad, forgive your mom, and make peace with all of it and become someone worthy of a man, uh, especially as a man you kind of talk about making that kind of money, become worthy of somebody saying, I will take a shot. Because honestly, ma'am, a woman with a child by a man with multiple children is a real big red flag. You're pretty. Men will men will hear you out. But you got to have more than pretty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you broke up. You couldn't hear me. And then, OK, I'm sorry. I don't know what, what, what no, just happened. I couldn't hear anything again. Okay. okay. I, I'm saying that okay, you gotta you therapy. Therapy. Because you need to you need to resolve this thing with your child's father. But you're twenty four. You can have this resolved by by the time you're age twenty six. Yes, you can date between now and then. You just can't do anything very seriously. Uh find someone in in all honesty, ma'am. Are you can you are you still here? She seems like she's kind of frozen right there. I, iPad, I'm going to mute you while she's in process. What's going on? I am so nervous, Kevin. Why? Oh, my God. I can't even believe I'm calling into the show. What's your first name? So I can know Lillian, you. Lillian, I've been watching you since really, like, August. Uh -huh. But I put, like, my family cousins co-workers um i even actually told i mean you have definitely changed my life like i went and the reason why i was so nervous is because i'm in the danger zone so okay yeah um i literally 35 years old from atlanta i'm nigerian also uh and catchy in the comments but typically um I just usually keep to myself and then I caught an episode when you were describing um, the women that wait for Jesus or whatever. Uh -huh. that, that was me. Um, right. But, you know, I woke up and I was like, OK, like God is not going to bring anybody if you don't really put yourself out there. I put myself out there early, like May, found your show in August. Like um, I'm in a relationship with a really good man. He is more like of uh, Henry in training. Um, he's trying to be a pharmacist. Okay. I live in Atlanta, but I know you say don't talk to people out of town. But he actually wants to move. I only, to go I to only say there. don't. I only say only don't do that with no plan. Okay. So but he. Go ahead. He has family here, so the the strangest thing was before we even met, he already planned on trying to move to Atlanta. So I don't know. Everything seems to be orchestrated, but I was just nervous to call in. But I love your show so much. And I'm just like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's helped. I'm glad it's no, helped. No, it's, 
it's helped so much to where it's like I don't understand how certain women will hear things and then it hits them and it's like how do you not how do you not change because you're sensitive in your feelings I don't know if it's because I'm Nigerian American and like we're used to taking really rough criticism I'm not a PhD. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't talk about my profession to men actually. I'm an architect, but I don't bring it up because it's just yeah, super yeah. masculine career. Yeah, it is. You know, it's it's not easy. And so uh, so you guys have been let me run me around this into that. So you guys okay. have been dating for how long? We've only been dating since June and he made it like official in september okay and, and he's and he's talking and he's in pharmacy he's, he's going to pharmacy school he's going to school for pharmacy when will he graduate he will graduate actually in three years so oh. but he's already talked about going to pharmacy school and down, my age and down children, here um in atlanta or in houston texas and i used to live in houston so is there any talk from him of making um does he want do you want to get married of course does he yes. want to get married yes uh all right well somebody if he's going to be in school someone's gonna to have to move somewhere um uh, if, if you guys are serious moving like okay. i'm not one of those women where it's like because let me let me just be frank and be honest like when i was watching your show in the beginning you're gonna probably give me a little slap but i was i dated the wrong man when i was in my 20s so for all the young women out there who think they have time, I mean, I consider myself an attractive woman, but, you know, that doesn't mean anything. And no, yeah, you're attractive and it doesn't mean anything if you're dating the wrong guys. Yeah, exactly. And so the waste. I was, it's the waste of pretty. It, it really is. And I was dating the wrong guys. Um, and one guy who I did date after I started dating men who were more high value, mm. um, he wanted me to move and I was so stuck in getting my master's like oh, my parents are like get I'm your a education that's how african parents are like i really wanted to come on here to say that mm. because the funny thing is like i don't know if there's like a generational switch but you know typically like women have always been educated and i'm Igbo, which is a certain tribe nigerian's tribe okay but, i have to i have to get on to the next call uh, oh yeah it's but almost i really a appreciate it i wanted to call in i've been sharing your videos well, thank you. And I really thank you for everything that you do. It's definitely invite me to the wedding. Oh. Name, I will. name one of the kids after me. <laughs> Bye. Look, man. Look, guys. I know sometimes you guys are you guys are kind of used to it, but one thing I've had to get used to is um sometimes people just need to say thank you or they want to get something out. I meet people in person who watch the show and um it will be it will be really tacky of me to cut somebody off who takes time out of their life to watch me on a consistent basis and who just wanted to say thank you. Um that's really I, I you never should do that to people who support you. Um so, you know, it's cool. And thank you for calling in, man. Um, another thing, man, Atlanta is dripping with beautiful women. It is re the amount of beautiful women in Atlanta is insane. Um, and we're outnumbered down here because 17 to one already. And then when you factor in the alternative lifestyle, boy, howdy. Um, it will be easy to lose your mind and do bad things down here. Good thing is your godfather is a decent dude. Uh, but like I said, um, I, I'm about 92.5% sure I'm moving to New York City. I'm going to LA to check it out, but I think they're going to be locking... San Diego down, going back to tier one lockdown in LA. It's just all that traffic. I love New York city. Every if, even when I'm back, I'm still there in my mind. I love that city. All right, Giovanna, I can't see you. Got one more call. 
let's see. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Yeah, first name. Good. What do you got for me? Mm hmm. No, no, I've I will cook. been to I, New York and I've been stuck in traffic for about four to five minutes to an hour, but it was I'm, like non moving. I'm, I'm coming to LA this weekend. And the thing is, here's the funny thing, Giovanna. I said the same thing about New York. When my company <laughs> asked me to move to, to, to cause I thought I went back a few minutes. So for those of you who don't know, I used to be in telecommunications before the whole industry fell apart. I thought I was going to get promoted to the West coast, LA. And then LA office got paused. So I thought I was going to go to Oakland, San Francisco, but that office got paused. They asked me, well, what do you think about New York? I had never visited New York. I, Here's how ignorant I was. I thought all the women in New York were going to be ugly. I thought the city no was. Just, I thought it was. I was just I, the worst parts of the Bible. I went up there on a Friday <laughs> with my then girlfriend, and I'm looking around. I'm like, and I went up on a Friday. They offered me the job on Monday. I was living there on a Wednesday, and it's the first time I've ever felt legitimately at home. I was so wrong about New York. That told me that I should never make a decision. So when I go to L.A., I'm going to be open. I'm going to go to Beverly Hills and Malibu. The, all the bougie shit that I like to do and see how that works. What you got for me? So yeah. I could, so I could easily be like, "Hey, you know what? All that shit I said about uh, New York City, yeah, I'm taking that other five percent. I'm going to L.A. because I exactly why because I've never lived in, here. yeah, because I've lived in New York City before. I've never lived in L.A. And the worst thing that could happen is I could try L.A. for a year, and if I don't like it, I could still you go to would, New York. Sweetheart, I'm not trying to discourage you. All you need is one day. <laughs> well, we shot. Well, now one thing I do know about LA is the women are gorgeous. Well, first of all, all you, listen, we have the three W's: the women, the and the weather. So I'm gonna the middle the women, part. Uh, figure it out. All right, the weather. See, now funny thing is, believe it or not, I'm a cold weather dude. So New York actually has better weather for me because I can't wait to pull out my coats and stuff. All that stuff would be. Well, I don't know. It was actually cooler in LA this week than it was in New York. It's Ooh. it's well to us, it's very cold. So it what do you got for me, though? We, we just talking like ain't nobody watching. Um, What's going on? I apologize. <clears throat> um, I've dated high value men. Um, I have no children. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I believe in marriage. However, I'm scared. Does that make I, I don't even know if I'm making. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that makes yeah, scared. Yep. Certainly does. My grandparents were married for 58 years plus. Mm -hmm. I see that. I want it. Mm -hmm. I just, but their times were different back then. And the, the, I mean, the two men that I have in my head, mm -hmm. they both have kids. Mm -hmm. So, so let me, let me ask you, how old are you? 37. You look at me, you would not see it. And that's look. I, God, look, I was, I was. Look, I was seeing somebody who was thirty-seven, and she was fine as she was in her twenties. So, look, man, just because I say <laughs> danger zone and no man's land, oh no, I don't get offended. I, I'm talking to my audience. I'm talking to the audience because I, oh, sorry. I'm just saying because it, it, it's it's for the show. But okay, you, the two guys. Do you have anybody that's considering proposing to you? Both of them. And listen, it's 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 because I feel that I have more to offer to them. And it's because I come to the table with no chill. Listen, kids are a big deal. So and I really I really do you feel like you're equally yoked to these guys? <sighs> okay, so what I'm getting can't from find you, a man with no kids. What, so what I'm getting from you is you feel like you're you're what I'm hearing from you is they're getting a better deal than you are. That's what I'm getting from you. Is that the truth? That's kind of how I feel because I don't have any kids. They don't have okay. to deal with no baby daddy. Let, let, let's stop. Let's kids. stop right here. Let's let me, let me back some things down. Right. What does are you okay? Are you seeing both of these men seriously? No, 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 no. Okay. No, so, not, it's I listen. 
I've known one since I was basically a kid. And it's, we're not in that type of space. Okay, well, moment. let's talk about the I'm one actively, that... I'm actively... I'm actively... Okay. Okay, I gotta, get, I gotta get on down the path, though. So I'm trying to get what I need. Are you dating... Not the one that you knew since you was a kid. Number two, are you actively dating yes. him? Yes. How long have you been actively seeing him? One year. Okay. Um, is he living in L.A. with you? Correct. Yes. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm building my own business, but I am in the restaurant industry. I'm a server. All right. What does he do for a living? He had his own mortgage company. He used to work for Disney. He was an executive. He's actually building his own. All right. So he out earns. Right so he out earns. He out earns you. Absolutely. Okay. So let me let me let me let me back you down on a few things because while you may be all the great things you're saying, ma'am, I used to be a server, but I was a server after I got my degree in engineering and was an engineer. And to hear a woman say that you feel like because they got kids, you're getting an unfair deal when he's a former executive and you're a server is crazy to me. Crazy. You're overvaluing yourself, fam. Just from that alone. Does that make sense? I can understand where you're coming from, Mr. How, Samuel. How tall are you? Five, seven. Dress size. Let's. I would jump. Let me. Let me not do that because I'm six. Even though I want to be a four. <laughs> okay. How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? Uh, one thirty-two, and I was not happy. I want to be one twenty-five. All right. So if you had to give yourself a rating, fresh face out of the shower, no wig, no weave, no whatever, what would you give yourself? And you cannot use Ooh. seven. Well, see that, ladies. That's who you are, though, ladies. That's who you are. What would you give yourself? No, you can't use seven. I can't use a seven. That is my number. Exactly. That is that's, my that's, no. That's that's, that's that's why that's why I take it away. What would you give yourself without? Well, no, ma'am. I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm teasing you. I'm being. I'm and and thing is, funny. and even if I gave myself a four, my my bank account's a nine and a half. I have a question. What are we basing the scale on? No, I mean, ma I do have clear ma skin. Man, just give me, just give me a ballpark. If you say not seven, then seven and a half. Nope, you can't use sevens at all, man. Six and three quotas. Okay. <laughs> See, and is that an LA six? Why wouldn't it be? I know. I don't know. Is. I'm asking because a six in LA is different. And what I'm asking, ma'am, a six makes you cute. <laughs> Okay, and a five makes you average, which means just like every, half the people in this world are average. A six makes you a little bit more than as cute, but I just eight, feel that brains is more, you know. It doesn't no, but that, that, but you're not a no. See, that's bullshit. No, okay, it doesn't. No, 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 it doesn't. I'm not a brain, okay, listen. Brain, no, no, good. you listen. You can't overtalk me. It's still my show. I, even if you're a fan, but that doesn't work. And yes, sir, the thing is, you need to understand something. What you think doesn't matter when it comes to us. Got it. Beauty matters to us. Men are visual. And you ladies always want to change the game to benefit you. It works the way it works because that's who we are as human animals. Eight is Beyonce. Nine is Kelly Rowland. Ten would have been Halle Berry in her prime. So if you're a six, that makes you cute. Thelma, remember Thelma on Good Times? She was a seven. So no, 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 no. Then Dag Nabbit, I'm a ten. What the? Oh uh, no, you're not a ten because you'd already been married with kids by now. So I've never you, been married. But the thing, because you ain't no damn ten, you can call no, yourself what I you want. I live in L.A. <laughs> now you, I've now I'm gonna LA. tell you right now, you're on the verge of getting it's muted. Different. You're on the verge of getting muted because here's the thing: is if you were a ten in L.A., tens don't tens aren't servers at thirty-seven. Let me just go ahead and put it right. If you're a ten. Somebody would have put you on the payroll by now. You'd have been a kept woman. You'd have been uh, the the uh, you'd have been the side piece to one of the multiple millionaires in L.A. If you were a ten, you're not that, ma'am. Let's get back to reality. You're on the you go you're close to forty, and a server. That's true. 
That means there's no retirement plan. There's no long history of earning. Ma'am, please stop you, Mr. Samuels. Uh, no. Because unless okay. you're going to tell me you went to college and had some sort of career. No, I, my, no, it's. Do you come I from money? My, <laughs> my mother has four college degrees. I don't care what, shit, I, what your I, mama I, have. I, Man, what I, kind, how much I, money do you have saved for retirement? My retirement is for my business. That how I'm much money do you have saved for retirement? Oh, not as much as I should. How much money do you I have saved for retirement? My business. Okay, ma'am. Now, see, it's, now it's starting to become more clear. See, I need you to back. I need you to slow down. Yes, I'm, I'm talking to a woman who's almost forty years old, and I spoke to a woman in California like yourself earlier this week. She was thirty-nine. Mm -hmm. Just bopping through life like nothing, no big deal. Like you got all the time in the world, ma'am. You are a wait. You are a server. That's a fancy word for a waitress. Yeah, I don't know. I don't exactly. It means you look at fifty years. Do you have medical insurance? Absolutely. Great. Um, do you own your own condo? No, I don't not I do not own any property. Do you own your own car? Do you own your own car? Do you own your own car? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, so sir. So if have you to. have to live for the rest of your life and be unmarried, you'll be living basically like most people in this country, paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Stacking little aside because LA is expensive. When fifty years old happens and medical bills and things start happening. Then life kicks in. No children, no husband. Who's going to help when you cannot, when you can't work like you're doing? And the business you're planning on opening, eighty percent of the new businesses fail inside the first uh, five years. So we got only, we only can count what you have. Who's going to help if you need? Who's going to assist you if you need any help at fifty? Mr. Samuels, I'm aware that I have I have myself. I'm definitely but, aware. But if you but if you fall ill, something happens, you break an ankle like I did on the bicycle race. Who's I going have to life help? Life insurance. Bear I know. Me, I, I, me, I, yeah, life insurance is life insurance, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am. If you broke an ankle, broken ankle puts you out for twelve weeks at fifty years old. Who can help you? Who can come take you back and forth to the doctor? come around the house i mean do you have do you have the money to take care of that not the way that i would think then listen ma'am I'm, I'm then this I, is why I, i'm not listening to what you have to say because all you want to tell me is how it's not that big a deal and this is what i need the audience and you to understand this is sad that was this pathetic. is sad that black women are the most vulnerable people in this country because of this because you need a man in your life to go through life with because one income, one person is a is a disaster waiting to happen. Everything has to happen. OK, you have to maintain good health, never get sick, never get ill, never have anything. And your job right now depends on you showing up. You don't go to work. You don't make money. That is the life of a that is the life so many black women have. And you're talking about. Men who make far more than you and one that you said are looking at you seriously and you're talking about a man having kids, you sound, that's that's crazy, man. Mr. Samuels, everything has different circumstances, correct? Is all that, that just, is all that just, went, just went over your head. Look, ma'am. I don't. I, I just went over your head, ma'am. Look. No, that's not true. Please, I'm listening. Yeah, no, okay. What's the big deal about him having kids and you ain't got shit? A six. A six who don't have shit. A waitress is a six who don't have shit. I mean, I have to go there. I have to say it that way so you can... You are a six and a waitress at 40 who don't have shit. And you're saying a man who was an executive at Disney, you, you should be running to... Oh, my God was I don't care what he was he still is making more than you he has more than you 
Mm-hmm. You're talking like, and the st- what started this all off is you said, I said, ma'am, you sound like a woman who thinks she's getting a bad deal. You think you are bringing more to the table than him. And I'm talking and I'm saying this to my audience. This is a black woman in Los Angeles who is a waitress and almost 40 years old and a six with this kind of attitude when a man was a former executive and worked at Disney. Do you know how much money I make as a waitress? Do you make more than he does? He lives with his mother. Yes, I do. He's not an executive anymore. Now see how she changed it. When I asked, does he make more money than he did? All right, I'm done. All right. See, I just. Some people just have to be what they are. See how that worked? All this time, he was an executive. He did this and got that and has this. And now he lived with his mama. Yeah. All right. Ma'am, unmute yourself, please. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Ma'am. Yes, sir. You just went from telling me this man out earned you to now he's he living did. with his mother. A- okay, so why is he living with his mother? I ask him that too, Mr. Mm-hmm. Samuels. Is he is, 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 is he broke? Is, is he broke? Is, okay, is he broke? This is I don't know. Okay. I'm about to cry about it because I don't know. Why are you cry about the cry? Act like a okay. How about you act like a grown up, ma'am? This is what you brought to me. You brought to me a man you've known since childhood who ain't. You said he. No, 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 please. I know what I heard. You brought to me a man that you've known since you were a kid. And there's nothing going on between you two. And the man you said you've been seeing for a year. Mm-hmm. What is your ultimate point, ma'am? Because now I don't believe what you're telling me. How how about this? Here's a better question. How come since he since he's no longer worth a damn, how come you can't since you're so since you're so much better than him? Um, and I'll take that. Why can't you find a man uh on your level? It seems like men out here aren't on that type of level. Everyone seems to have the same thing. It's in my opinion. What do you mean? What what kind of level is that? Single people are. I'm not an unhappy person. I just, no no no, I ma'am. Mean, but ma'am, relationships are marriage is business. It ain't love. I'm trying to understand what level you're on. I mean. Well, I don't. You, the, you're a six reason, and a forty-year-old waitress. What level are you talking about, sir? Ma'am, that's what it is. I'm not trying to be rude, but I that's what it you're is. Being rude. I don't think you're being rude at but all. But what are you talking I about? Your level. I just have a fear of continuing on. And I'm gonna be somewhere that in my life that I'm not just gonna be able to have anyone. And I feel like I should choose someone now. You don't have and any just options. Continue man. on with the business. Okay. Okay. I know what you're talking about, ma'am. You said who? Who are your options? Who are you seriously seeing? I'm seriously dating the individual I told you. The former. right. The guy who. The guy who all of a sudden now lives with his mama. Okay. So if you don't choose him, what what are your other options? Someone else that I was dating prior. But then there's also other people as well because I don't but like I said, I'm a I'm a little guarded. Because you, I don't Okay, I've, man. I've all right, ma'am. Person. All right, ma'am. Uh, all right, ma'am. Um, look. The person you said I think you may be a perfectly reasonable person, but you're sounding kind of deluded. 
I don't mean to. Well, but but the thing is, ma'am, you can only play with the cards that are in your deck. And ma'am, I need you to understand that at 37 years old, it is unusual for someone to be a server. I mean, you should have had more stable employment in a in a career. Most of the time people do this is because they have a, let's just say it, a very bohemian or flighty kind of personality. And you were going to tell me how much you make annually? It's what? It's nowhere near what these gentlemen. What do you make? Nowhere near what, what they make. What do you make? Mm, 40 on a good day. $40,000. Annually. I'm meaning. $40,000 annually in LA is $20,000 in Atlanta. $10 an hour. You are broke. And I'm, and why I'm pressing, who said she feels that the men, that she is bringing more to the table or getting a, a raw deal. Ma'am, you will be fortunate to have somebody who would be willing to even go 50-50 with you for the rest of your life at your age and your your attitudinal disposition. You need a reality check. And let me be the one to give it to you. You don't bring that much to the table. As a woman who gives herself a six in L.A. as a waitress, you're you massively overvaluing you. yourself. You made me give myself a six. Cause no, you no, said I asked you what you, I, no, ma'am, you ain't that fine. And that's you, the thing. Uh, sir, that's not fair. It no, is I'm fair. It is that. fair. Well, you can put your camera on right now. Put it on. Get on the camera right now then. Just shut cam up. Cam up since it ain't that fair. Cam the fuck up. It's not. Cam the fuck it's up. Shut up and cam fair. up. You grown child. Listen to what she just said. It's not a 40-year-old child. Oh, my God. God ain't got nothing to do with this. This is your problem. No, I know. I know. And I'm the problem is kidding. we got too many women like you walking around thinking you're more than you are when your life has told you, ma'am, you don't have high-value men, productive, competitive, successful men who are worth a damn coming to try to holler at you. The best you have is some guy you said used to be an exec at Disney or something like that, but now he's living with his mama. Well, that's about all you can get. That should tell you kind of where you rank. So maybe if you start pulling your level down and start worrying about kids and that's the other kind of stuff, as if you are something you are not and got reasonable and said, I would just be happy to find a guy who's working for the city or a postman or a plumber or something, somebody who I can split these bills with because I'm broke as French toast. I don't even know how you, who, how long you been living with your mother? Excuse me? How long has who's been living with whose mama? At 40 years, you're making 40,000 in LA. Where do you live? I don't live with my mother. Who do you live with? I definitely rent. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I mean, uh, 40 years old in LA. Ma'am, and since you want to cap like that, I'm like, minimum wage in LA is what? I don't know. I think it's 13, but I don't make that. Okay. R r no, you don't. But if you made 13, have... if you made 13 at one job and went and got a part time job, made enough, see, $13 an hour was $26,000 a year. And if you went and got a part time job, 60 hours, you'd still be making $40,000 a year. You're effectively making minimum wage. And this all got started because of the issues you're talking about and what you, the guys you're dealing with and don't worry about the, having kids and nothing, ma'am. All those things are outside of your, uh, what you need to be dealing with. Honestly, if you have any kind of benefits or anything like that, I would suggest therapy because it sounds like there's some things that really aren't making sense to me, but, it, but you don't have these kind of options. No one's beating down your door to try to date you or actively not, not that you want anyway, the kind of men that you would want ain't trying to holler at you and that should be uh, 
an indication that something needs to be addressed. Got it? I do. Men cannot allow, men cannot live in that level of delusion. We just can't. Um, look, ladies, Frankenstein's monster trying to get it all from one place from from different sources. But a lot, but a lot of you are really going to just have to, you know, real world interventions are going to be needed with a lot of American women and especially a lot of sisters. brokenness i am i am hearing far too many women over 35 who are broken that's why there's this delusional thinking and no one thinks that the the wheel is going to stop at what point you will be sick injured something I've said it before and I said it again. I don't care about love. I care about respect more than anything else. Uh it seems as though people don't like the con the, the next ex-wife thing. Uh I said this on Instagram. You know, rotation dating and all that's fine. That's fine. But pr- truly success high value men, uh productive, competitive, successful men, they don't have rotations of five, six, seven. You know, at best, you need a serious relationship and then date two or three people. Honestly, guys, two or three people pick the one you want to deal with and make sure that she realizes you picked her. As long as she's on your program, you're working together, but you need to give her standards and and things that you expect to be done for having the number one spot. And she needs to be compensated as the number one player. You don't you get one person, people. You don't see millionaires and billionaires with three and four and five people. You pick one. And the thing that terrifies so many women about picking one is you feel like, well, if I pick him, I what well, I could have had him and I could have had him. And all along, it makes you it makes you less desirable for anything. Broken. Whole people don't feel like they need to hedge and protect themselves and guard themselves and keep their options open and all sudden. Whole people don't do that. Broken people want to keep their options open and keep it safe and play it light and keep it cool and da 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 That shit is for early twi- teens, early 20s. But by 25 years old, that should be out of your system. But far too many, in this case, black women, you are living life between the age of 25 and 40 as if you did still in your 20s. You have not emotionally matured. That's why, like I said, this whole. I'm a PhD. It's so funny because you hear so many women who have, like Claudia said, you can commit to your career, your degree path, your job. You are professional. They're on the spot, hardworking, all this other kind of stuff. But you cannot commit to the most important thing in life, a family, a man. And it is time to start calling it out. 80% of the relationship falls on you because it is your job to maintain it. It's our job to start it and fund it. It's your job to maintain it. It is not my job. These guys job to make you the happy wife. Happy life is a fiction. It is your job, your job to maintain the home, your job to maintain the family. Even if there are no family, no kids, it's still your job to maintain what I bring. I bring the meat, you cook it. And so many of you women know when it gets right down to it, your skills for maintenance are trash. 
Let that be a lesson. Say no further. Decide to do something because more and more men are starting to step up and say, okay, cool. Forget it. Yep. Because 80 percent of the guys want something. And if you and if you're not that woman, what are you expecting to do? Expecting to wait for you forever? I am seeing more and more women who are on the bridge, on the precipice of either moving forward like the first caller or staying stuck like so many before. It is a choice. But living life in fear, guarded, cold, slow, um, aloof. You may feel like it makes you secure, gives you power, keeps you safe, but it does nothing. It's tragedy. It is sad. Shout out to the Roommates Podcast, the tragedy of the independent woman. It is sad because on no other race in this country like black women have bitten this pill. White women will get with, in line with their men. Hispanic women will get in line with their men. Asian women will get in line with their men. Middle Eastern women will get in line with the men. Black women stand by themselves with their damn dogs, their girlfriends, their broken relationships, their opinions, and an inability to work with a man. Ladies, you're not special. You are judged by the kind of man you can acquire, keep, and work with. That's worldwide. You cannot come into the company function with pits and pieces of eight different men. And the fact of the matter is, many of you want a thorough man, but Stefan said it better than I could. Thorough men demand that you level up. They demand it. And if it's overwhelming, if you get scared, if when you're in the presence of a man who's transparent, upfront, direct, purposeful, it's not because he was too clingy or too much too soon or whatever. No, 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 no. You're broken. How many times have you heard that uh, women in the chat room, fellas? How many times have you heard women say that? Oh, well, he came on too fast and this or that. Uh, you're not 20. How many times are women? Yeah, huh, uh huh, yeah, six months or less, you should get married. Um, but then you hear the very same woman. Oh, he came on too fast. He worked too fast. He started freaking me out. I got this. Just say, I ain't got my shit together. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about this. Tomorrow's, well, t- tonight's broadcast. Tomorrow night's smoke show. There's going to be a time that there's a time frame that I think any any anybody should be allowed some grace. But ladies, stop trying to run the clock out. Stop stalling. Discernment, discipline. Make some choices. Make some decisions. Pick. And let the chips fall where they may. All right. So, good broadcast. I'm glad we did this one. I'm tired. I'm tired. I got to pack. Get ready to do what I do. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. Shout out to all the Feminine, beautiful, and inspirational women out there. Shout out to the women who are in process and getting better. You know, I don't think we give you guys enough. We we give the women who are already there, but shout out to the women who are in process, who are woken up and say, you know what? I need to get my ish together. So let me get on the grind. Shout out to you too. Congratulations. You're taking a you're taking a major step and they end up getting what it is you say you want to lie. Shout out to the brothers that are on the drive, on their purpose. Already standing in the gap and on their thorough side. Shout out to the brothers who are on the hit squad. Henry's in training. See, as long as it's forward movement, it's forward movement. Forward movement requires a lack of fear, a willingness to risk, 
a willingness to try, fall, and do better, a willingness to get out there and build an airplane while you're flying it. And that kind of stuff draws people. People who move that way are drawn towards one another and they repel the people who are bullshitters, squatters, time wasters, all that sort of kind of stuff. Guys, ladies, gentlemen, it do yourself. Think of it this way. The people who fall away, uh, it's because you're on a path that they're not on. I told my guys in MIT, me in the training, life happens outside and life is about people. Stop worrying about the people who can't stay. St start worrying about the people who are up ahead and enjoy the things for what they are. We have to get to a point to where we start valuing human contact and interaction. To where human contact and interaction is valuable. That's how you build a network. Some people are in your life for a season and a reason. Instead of mourning their passing, be happy that you had it. I prefer to move that way, honestly. I, I that That's the way I live. I, I'm like, man, yeah, I'm happy that I had it for what I had and cool. Peace. So that's what's good, people. Your Godfather's out. Until next time, peace. We are gone. That if Kevin's not on open next year, they need to be shot. Man, we'll see. Oprah, Dr. Phil, something, right? Join Patreon to support the movement. Um, Patreon content dropping tomorrow. Patreon's been having a little hiccup with their uh, payment processing, too, so... Uh, you get a week extension in that thing. So there you go. Join Patreon. Men and women. Yep. I will be putting much more content on Patreon uh, mid-February, mid-November through the rest of the year. Join me in the frat room and IG. I'm telling you, IG is where it is. I go live on IG at least once a day. When it's up, it's up. When it's down, it's down. Today was a gym. It's on IGTV. Go check it out. That car analogy was dope. What's going on here, man? Nothing can stop. Email your show ideas to info at bykevinsamuels.com or address your topics to Ask Godfather in the subject line and I may make a video responding to it at info bykevinsamuels.com or go to bykevinsamuels.com book your one-on-one -on -one individual session with me virtual consultation, individual session, either one but respect my inbox. Guys, remember, life is choice driven. The life you have is, de is determined by the choices you make. You don't get to choose what happens to you, only how you respond. Respond in a way that's going to make you proud now, today, and in the future. Peace out. We are gone.